this is Sydney Jolson from Zeal to Heal and I'm so excited to do this series called World Religions and today we're going to be looking at Hinduism. Hinduism is an ancient old religion and contrary to popular understanding there is a one eternal origin God and it is a polytheism a, a a plethora of many gods that have incarnated avatars of this one almost a Hindu trinity Brahman the originator the creator then there's Vishnu the preserver the sustainer of life and then there's Shiva the destroyer there are many variants and different ways of expressing gods and goddesses, but it's ultimately leading to this Hindu trinity. The Hindu gods are impersonal, they are aloof, they're distant, and there's no real sense of relationship that there's a talking and a communicating between the worshippers and the gods. So this is a great opportunity to ask a Hindu person, when last did your God speak to you? Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, the Trinity, He communicates with us. Not only do we pray to Him, He communicates and speaks into our hearts. You see, their statues have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. And they have hands, but they don't do. When you are speaking to a Hindu person, Keep the personhood of God in mind, that He's personal, He is imminent, He is here. He's not just far, He is right here, listening and is caring for us. They would say to you that hell is this place on earth. It's important to tell the Hindu that this is not hell. Hell is exponentially worse. It is a place of incredible suffering that would never turn off. There's no comfort in hell. There's no love in hell. There's no connection in hell. It is a place of eternal fire and we need to make a decision for Christ here and now so that we can avoid hell. Jesus speaks about hell 50% of his teachings. So they would ask you, is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Well, we speak about not just from someone's experience, but God himself became a man, Jesus, and he himself taught us about heaven and hell. Reincarnation is a real big part of the Hindu belief system. Reincarnation is that there will be a returning and a reincarnating of oneself into better and better forms. The idea, reincarnation, is that things are getting better and better. Well, it's a good time to ask. So, is the world becoming a better place? But what we see in reality is the sin is getting worse, it's getting darker. But grace and the goodness of God is being highlighted more and more because of this. So... Reincarnation in the philosophy that things are getting better and better and that people's lives are improving and improving, it's not landing in reality. They believe that ultimately they'll be reincarnated with the higher power, with the eternal power. Not seen as a person, but as a force, as an energy, as a source. It's here at this point where you can make the gospel personal and talk about that that higher power is a person and his name is Jesus. One of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Three in one, not separate entities, but one entity, three persons. When speaking to a Hindu person, there's some do's and don'ts. Don't rush ahead and just assume, rather listen. Take time, be patient, to understand where they are coming from. From what they are telling you, launch off your questions. Use stories to help them understand the concepts of forgiveness and relationship with God. 
Like, for example, Luke 15 of the prodigal son and the father that runs out to him is a beautiful story because in their book, the Bhagavad Gita, are many stories and they would understand through stories the gospel. Some things that you're not to do is to ask a Hindu person, which caste do they belong to? To bring meat out and assume that they are meat eaters. Lots of them are vegetarians. Don't assume that Hindus are all practicing the same thing. There are many variations to the Hindu belief. Don't tell them what they believe. Allow them to tell you. Don't make fun of their temples, their rituals, and their ways of working out their belief. But invite them to your home. Build relationship. Build a bridge. Treat a Hindu with respect. And remember, God is love. And it's through love that they're going to be changed and their, their lives are going to be transformed. To try and shove down and confront and cause arguments, well, that's going to just break your relationship. Do not witness to a Hindu out of duty or obligation, but rather because you have love and compassion in your heart. Care for them. Look for opportunities to be generous. Be a constant learner from where they are coming from, understanding their way of doing life. Because Hinduism is very entrenched in the daily lifestyle. When a Hindu gives their life to Jesus, encourage them that it's not them rejecting their family, but it's their families that are rejecting them. That giving your life to Jesus doesn't mean that you are rejecting your family. But that is such a huge point because a lot of my Hindu friends in India have suffered a great deal because of the gospel and they've been ostracized from their families and their homes. There's a great cost for a Hindu to become a believer, but the cost can never outweigh the eternal glory of salvation. We need to carefully incorporate in our message that it's an exclusive believing in Jesus, not Jesus being added to the plethora of gods and goddesses, but it's exclusively Jesus, the only way, truth and life. And in Acts 4 verse 12, that there is salvation in no one else, no other name under heaven given to man, but the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it might take some relationship building to bring them to that place, but it is well worth it. I pray that this helps you, that you've come to understand a little bit more about Hinduism and how to approach the Hindu and that you would have many opportunities to bring them into saving faith. God bless you.